Okay, this is Xi'an's Rock History Part 4, Punk Rock. So, just as Del Shannon's Runaway established um, garage rock in 61, the next development in rock, um, punk rock, was established by the Kinks in 1964 with their two singles, You Really Got Me um, and All Day and All of the Night, which both really deviated from the kind of original rock, skippy rock and roll sounds. Uh, the, four, the first um, being really driving, and then you, all, all day and all the night, bam, you know, another classic kind of early punk rock sound. So big rhythm changes, surely, uh, unless you were in the seat within the scenes, you, that would have been quite a new thing. Um, the, uh, the other major element of them was distortion, and uh, that is that was originally created by simply overdriving musical instruments, guitars or amplifiers, put all the dials on full and the, the, you make the speakers bleed and the sound waves break up, that's distortion, right? And the, uh, eventually it was, they were, it was engineered into pedals and specialized equipment, um, like rats and, and fuzz overdrive pedals. But um, yeah, at first you just have to make, you know, kind of make the equipment struggle. And um, the Kinks, for example, put needles in their speaker phones uh, to, to get the desired effect. Um, and uh, and yeah, but it was an intensification. All this, yeah, the change, these changes in rhythms, um, and the, the, this heavy distortion sound, uh, dirty distortion, uh, it made for an intensification, right? Um, so that was kind of a, a newish thing. Um, interestingly, the Kinks uh, went kind of back to their kind of uh, pop and clean roots. It seemed to be just a phase for them. Um, and in pop and uh, songwriting, they were, they continued to be very influential um, through uh, up until today. Um, and that happens a lot, you know. Um, the uh, famous comedian and, and cultural vessel David Bowie frequently and briefly uh, came in and out of scenes, you know, encapsulating those scenes and, you know, um, like one year was, you know, glam and then, um, uh, uh, or, you know, prog, another year, you know, um, and, uh, but there's always, um, the, the fundament is always going to be you know, und mainly underground, un unknown bands, many of which never uh, make it and never make any money and lost it into obscurity. You know, that often the people that create these or pioneer these sounds uh, never get famous. Um, but you know, we still have a good uh, trajectory to pull on good, good recorded history. And I'd say that um, a very large proportion of, of um, great bands uh, do and end up one day being um, successful. Maybe uh, slightly successful, um, or maybe very successful. Um, but uh, the next pillar in this rock story to pull on these themes, um, and you can tell by the name, the Velvet Underground, um, they may even have seen themselves as one of these kind of um, underground uh, garage rock bands, um, and then uh, and then they just kind of exploded creatively and uh, eventually commercially and started releasing records in 66 and, uh, and they, they were influential in, in, in a myriad of different ways and in pop, some of the, you know, some of the great pop songs in, in history were by, by them. Um, and um, and avant-garde, you know, you, you get like moments on white, uh, white, um, white heat, white light, where it's just distorted, like crazy distorted guitars, um, and amongst all, all these different uh, kinds of musics, they they continued. They they took the banner of punk rock and they continued it. Some of their songs uh, were really heavy um, punk rock songs, you know, like um, you know, like a really driving beat with a really heavy guitar in your face, you know, un un unabashed. Um, and the distortion sound became like you know 
centre stage. Um, and so uh, they, yeah, for me, they, they just continued that that uh, that feel the, the punk rock uh, lineage. Um, the next ones, though, uh, Iggy and the Stooges, um, Iggy Pop, and his band, the Stooges, um, from uh, from Detroit, Michigan, which was the city of Motown and one of the mega production centers of, of uh, music in world history. Um, his band could, might be called the first punk rock band because the Kinks were never a punk a rock band. You can't call them a punk rock band. They were punk rock kind of um, distributors, if you will, for mo a few moments, but they, they were a pop band, really. Um, and even Velvet Underground, they, had, they were so varied and so eclectic, you can't, no one would call them a punk rock band. Um, uh, although they carried the banner, yeah, so that it could be argued very strongly that the first punk rock band was the Stooges, and um, and it was all about the distortion. <laughs> all their songs have fat distortion sounds, sometimes to painful effects. You know, it's, um, um, really some really dirty um, uh, kind of feedbacky. Sounds and, and um, songs like "I Want to Be Your Dog" uh, just sounds so modern. I mean, if I'd never heard a, an inkling of that band in my life, and then someone played it to me now, I, I may even think it, they were from the '90s or something. You know, they were really kind of um, really sonically progressive, um, and uh, um, yeah. And so, so for me, that's the um, the the punk rock. The origin of punk rock. Uh, 